Welcome back to the Pearlworks channel. Here I am again, pretending to pick out the lumber, even though I've already decided what piece I need. This is a nice piece of cocoa bolo that I'm going to be using for this ring box. And the nice thing about making these small ring boxes is they don't take too much wood, so you could afford to use a nicer wood like cocoa bolo in this case. And the previous box I made was made of purple heart. Um, but because they're so small, they do require a certain level of precision because any arrows you make will just be much easier to see. Like a lot of the exotics, this cocoa bolo is really dense and really hard. Uh, so I was taking very light passes at the joiner, making sure I wasn't getting too much tear out. After that, I took it to the planer to get it down to its final thickness. To prevent snipe, I ran this 2x4 through with the cocoa bolo, so I made sure that it was trailing and leading the piece so that if any snipe happened, it would happen on the 2x4. I like to use dedicated ripping and crosscut blades, especially on a piece like this where you have such a dense exotic wood. The crosscut blade with the higher tooth count gives you a glass like finish. The CNC comes in handy when I want to do a custom engraving like this. I'm doing a pretty simple V carving operation and this is a 1 8 inch V bit with maybe a 45 or 60 degree uh, angle. And this is just the my friend and his fiance's initials along with their original anniversary. I drew this little layout up in AutoCAD. If you don't have AutoCAD, you could use Microsoft Paint or a crayon. Um, but on the left side, we have the top of the box. And this large hole is a 5 8 inch hole. And that's going to be where the stone of the ring can be housed. These small holes are for magnets. And they're on both sides of the box. They're 8 inch magnets. And this hole right here is a 10 millimeter hole for the barrel hinge and likewise on the bottom of the box over here is where the other part of the barrel hinge will sit and this elongated hole over here is going to be three three eighths inch holes uh, that are going to be drilled and that's where the bulk of the ring is going to sit and these little curved triangles here will be taken away with the chisel I forgot to film me laying out the marks for all these holes and what I ended up using was just a marking gauge and a set of calipers and following the plans I previously went over. And I made this little fence out of some wood and some clamps and I wanted to make sure that if any of my marks were off centered I had the same side of the box against the fence. This would ensure that they all lined up nicely.
And this is the one design element in the whole box, is just giving it a slanted top. So I just did that the bandsaw and then took it over to the belt sander to clean up the rough edge. I like to use this granite plate for any of the small projects I make. It makes sure that every face that you sand is nice and flat. And I think this is a 220 grit pad and I took it all the way up to 320 or 400. This box is too small to take to the router, so I'm just using the block plane to put a 45 degree chamfer on all the edges. I wasn't entirely sure what kind of finish to use on this box. I didn't want to darken it too much. What I ended up using was just a regular paste wax. And I gave it just a coat, let it dry, and then buffed it out. And then down the road it can be reapplied if needed. I ended up drilling these holes undersized. I used a 7 64th inch drill bit and was able to press fit them. And this way I didn't have to worry about messing around with any CA glue or epoxy. The most crucial part of this project is installing this barrel hinge correctly. Not only do the holes have to be drilled to the right depth, but you also want to make sure that both pieces of the box are aligned in the same plane, which is why I have them clamped up the way they are. And keep in mind these barrel hinges are not meant to be used the way that I'm using them. They're usually used in pairs, and so when they're alone like this, they don't take twisting or lateral force as well. So I would make sure you don't stress out this hinge too much. And the last step of this project is to add a felt liner, and this is just going to hold the ring snug and protect it from the wood. I'm just using black felt and double-sided tape. Thanks for watching.